So what we're going to look at now is we're going to be looking at induction. And so induction is a mathematical proving process that is used oftentimes to prove things in, say, th uh, areas like number theory, recursion, um, with summations, with sequences. Uh, anytime we want to do, what we want to do is we want to make uh, um, some general statements about uh, um, explicit equations, okay? And so it's got, it's a two-step process. The first step in the process is the basis step. And then the second step is what's called our inductive step. So we're going to be looking at both of those uh, generally inside of this video. And then I've got a follow-up video where I'm going to actually look at um, how do we do some proving for more specific examples, all right? And you can see these are the kind of things, you know, that we can use induction for. One, like explicit formulas and identities for sequences and series, divisibility, inequalities, and sets and logic operations. So anytime what we want to do is we want to show that um, it's true for any n amount of objects, any n amount of integers, whatever it is, um, that's when we're going to be utilizing induction. The first step in induction is called the basis step. And so what we have to do inside of a basis step is we've got to show that the statement will be true for the smallest, lowest, or the beginning element in the proof. And so what we want to do is we want to look at what is the proposition that we're trying to prove to be true. So like in, the, in this example, prove that for every integer n, 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus dot 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 times n times n plus 1 is going to equal n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 3. So what we want to look at for our basis step is, is that we are going to choose only positive integers, okay? And the smallest positive integer is going to be for 1. So we're going to represent this pro proposition as p, and we're going to say we want to find p of 1. And what that means is that we want to show that the statement is true when n equals 1, our lowest value. So if I look at that, that that's going to be my first my first value is this 1 times 2. So 1 times 2, and the rest of these don't matter, at least in my in this statement, in the basis step, and then I'm just going to show that it's going to equal this. Remember that n equals 1, so this is going to be 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 2 divided by 3. Well, this is 2, and this side over here is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 divided by 3 which is equal to 6 divided by 3, which equals 2. Since 2 equals 2, check. The basis statement has now been proven. It is true, P is true, when n equals 1. And that's our basis statement. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say that what we want to do is we want to prove that 2 to the n is greater than n squared if n is an integer greater than 4. So what we're going to do here is we're going to consider what's the smallest value that we have to prove this statement to be true for. Well, if n is an integer greater than 4, the first integer greater than 4 is going to be 5. So we're going to prove that the statement is true for p of 5. Okay? So 2 to the 5th, all right? So 2 to the 5th is going to end up being 32. And that, in fact, is going to be greater than 5 squared, which is 25. So check, p of 5 is true. So our basis step has now been proven. The smallest integer that is greater than four is five. So consequently, we just show that the statement that we're trying to prove is true, is true when n equals five. The next step for us is the inductive step. So whenever we do induction, the idea behind induction is, is that we're gonna show that on the, we, the metaphor has been made that it's like a ladder. So on a ladder, what we have is we have the lowest rung, and then we're going to say everything is true for every rung up to a certain value, okay? And then we'll show it's true for the k plus one rung. And essentially the idea here is that if I show it's true for the bottom rung, and then I show it's true for the next rung after the bottom rung, and then I prove it, show that it's true, once I've proven that it's true for the second one, I can show that it's true for the third, and the fourth, and so on and so forth, then basically I'm going to kind of like walk my way up the ladder. The idea here is, is that I say, okay, it's true for the bottom rung, all right? And then I show that it's true for k plus one. Well, if it's true for one and it's true for k plus one, that means that it's true for two, because two is one plus one. And then once it's true for two, I know that it's gonna be true for three because three is two plus one. And then we're gonna kind of just move up. And that's the idea behind induction. Induction is just saying, okay, I show that it's true at the bottom level. And then after that, 
I show that it's true for each next step on the ladder, and I kind of just work my way up. And I just, theoretically, that means that that's, I never have to end, because if it's true for the next rung on the ladder, it'll be the, true for the rung after that. And so that's the idea behind induction. And so the inductive step is now going to assume that it's true for n equals k. So you almost like say, oh, okay, that's true for the basis step, n equals k. Now we want to show that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. And the trick here when doing these is two things. One is we want to like go in and figure out what it is that we are going to be assuming. And then two, we want to figure out what it is that we are going to end up trying to prove. Right? And I'm going to show you how uh, we kind of think about that in, some, in, in just a moment. Basically, we've got a conditional statement. The statement is, if the statement P is true for n equals K, that's our hypothesis, then the statement is going to be true for n equals K plus 1. So it's going to be true for the next value inside of our, um, the, the next value uh, on our ladder. Okay, so now let's take a look at this example that we looked at before. So what we want to do is we want to prove that for every positive integer n, this statement is true. So our assumption, the thing that we're going to assume is true. So we're going to assume this is true, is the statement is true for k. And notice what I did was everywhere I had an n, I changed it out for a k. Everywhere I have an n, I have a change it out for a k on both sides of the equality. Okay? Now, in the inductive step, what we want to show or what we need to prove is that the statement is now true for k plus 1. So everywhere where I had an n, I'm now going to replace with a k plus 1. So that's going to be 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus, and then so on and so forth. Then I'll have my k times k plus 1, and then plus k plus 1 times k plus, and it'll be k plus 1 plus 1, or k plus 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as k plus 1 plus 1 although oftentimes we'll just write it as k plus 2. And that'll equal then, and what we need to do now is replace all of our n's with k plus 1's. So k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 2 divided by 3. Okay? So essentially, that's what we're looking to show. <coughs> if I rewrite this, and I'm going to actually rewrite this, this is going to be, this last term will be k plus 1 times k plus 2. And that will equal then k plus 1 again times k plus 2 times k plus 3 divided by 3. Okay? So we've assumed that it's true, that the statement is true for all k. And then what we're looking to show is now, okay, add 1 to everything and see if that's also true. And that's our inductive step. This is essentially the essence of the inductive step. Now, there are a lot of different ways to go about proving induction. And in, one, in my later video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and show you some techniques for different kinds of induction. But this one I'm going to kind of go through to give you kind of a basic sense of how we might do something like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, so we assume that this statement is true. Well, what I need to now do, all right, so I have this assume. I assume or actually let's use the word let. We want to let 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus, plus k times k plus 1 equal k times k plus 1 times k plus 2 divided by 3. So that's a true statement now because that's our assumption. Then what I need to do is I need to, essentially I need to add, okay, my k plus 1 times k plus 2 to this original statement. So what I'm going to say then is 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus dot 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 plus k times k plus 1 plus k plus 1 plus k plus 2. So that's the next term. That's going to equal, well, What's really common for us to do inside of induction proofs is just to take this piece right here. That's the assumption. There's your assumption. And so I can replace the assumption with the equation, the explicit equation. It's going to equal k times k plus 1 times k plus 2 divided by 3 plus that extra piece, k plus 1 times k plus 2. 
So notice our assumption is that this piece right here equals this. That's what we assume to be true. So we can actually just substitute it directly into the equality. And then we just add on, we tack on the piece that we had, uh, that we were adding on to our original equation. The two are equal. Now, all this is really now is just some, uh, some algebra and a little bit of, you know, kind of tinkering around with it. Sometimes when you're doing induction, it's going to take a little bit of work to kind of work through the, um, work through like the tricks of the algebra. But in this case, this one's pretty straightforward. So this thing here, okay, is going to equal, I'm going to find a common denominator. It's going to equal K times K plus one times K plus two divided by three plus three times K plus one times K plus two divided by three. So common denominator, basically take one over one. There's your common denominator. And now we can add those together. This is gonna be K times K plus one times K plus two uh, plus three times K plus one times K plus two. All divided by three. We'll keep the three around. And now one of the things that I wanna do, okay, just a kind of a clever thing that we kind of do here with um, algebra is get smart about our factoring. So I'm gonna factor out k plus one and I'm gonna factor out k plus two. So what that's gonna give me is that's gonna give me k plus one times k plus two, right? Because we can factor both those terms out of here. And then the leftover terms are gonna be k plus three and then divided by three. So the factoring gives us exactly what we're looking for. Remember, that's actually what I'm looking for in terms of my induction. And so consequently, I'm finished. Thus, P of K plus one is true. The statement for K plus one is true. Therefore, I can in fact now assume by induction that one times two plus two times three plus three times four plus dot, 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 n times n plus one, and now I can just substitute in for a general n, is equal to n plus one, or n, times n plus one, times n plus two, divided by three. And my proof is finished. So, some things I wanna kinda of focus in on here is this, is one, we want to uh, identify what it is that we want to assume, all right? We start there, let's identify the thing that we want to assume. Then I want to figure out what it is that I want to show. Now, technically, I don't actually need to write this down. This is just one of those processes that I do in order to kind of keep things straight inside of my head as I'm working. So I'm going to say, okay, well now I want to show next, like this is the thing that I need to show. That way it also tells me when do I need to end. Notice I knew when I needed to end. I got to where I needed to be, okay? Then when I go to write my proof, I start out with the assumption. I let my assumption be true. I write out the next part inside of my equation. This is kind of a, a standard proof technique. And I'm going to replace the assumption, okay, inside of my equation. And then it's just a matter of some algebra. There are a lot of different proof techniques. So we're gonna see a lot of different kinds of proof uh, work in a lot of different kinds of inductive proofs, excuse me. So. They're going to be different each and every time. You're going to kind of like, you know, uh, do some similar things for similar kinds of proofs. And sometimes things will be slightly different, but you're just going to go in, basically do that. And then once you've gotten to what it is that you want to show, you can stop. Once that's true, it's true for P of K plus one. And therefore by induction, our statement is true. Okay. Basis step, inductive step that shows that things are true. Let's take a look at another example. So let's now prove that two to the n is greater than n squared if n is an integer greater than four. So we've already proven our inductive step, right? That two to the fifth is, or excuse me, our basis step, that two to the fifth is greater than five squared. That's already done. So consequently, we just need to do induction. So our assumption is two to the k is greater than k squared. Now let's think about what do we want to show? And we use an anagram of WTS in math and want to show, okay, that two to the K plus one is greater than K plus one squared. 
So two to the k plus one is greater than k plus one squared. That's what we need to show. So now that I know that, I'm going to let two to the k be greater than k squared for, yep, there it is, for k, right, greater than four. So we need, okay, that k is gonna be greater than four, it's also an integer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, two to the k plus one, all right? Two to the k plus one, and since what we're looking at is an inequality, especially with powers, a really common thing for us to do is to set this equal to two times two to the k. So the first part of our equality, or inequality in this case, two to the k plus one, we're gonna you know, kind of set that up. And then what we can do using rules of powers is we can basically pull out the two. So two times two to the k is now gonna be greater than, okay, two times k squared. And the reason why it's gonna be bigger than two times k squared is because two to the k is greater than k squared and we multiplied by a positive number, uh, specifically multiplied by two, okay, on both sides. So consequently, we keep the inequality. So now the next step that I need to do here is I need to go in and I need to ask whether or not, um, I've got two times two to the k greater than two times k squared. Now that's not k plus one squared. k plus one squared equals k squared plus 2k plus 1. So if instead I have something like this, 2 times 2 to the k greater than 2k squared, which is in fact greater than k squared plus 2k plus 1, or even equal to, then I have proven what I want to show. Proven what I want to show. Okay? Basically I have an inequality, like a string of inequalities, one being greater than the other, so consequently, two to the k plus one ends up being greater than k squared plus two k plus one. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to figure out when is this true. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna show that two k squared, right, greater than, I wanna know when it, is the, uh, when it is the case that this inequality is true. When is this true? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just subtract over, I'm gonna do some algebra. So I'm gonna subtract k squared plus 2k plus 1 from both sides. And so that's going to give me k squared minus 2k minus 1. And I want to know when is that greater than or equal to 0. I'll use my quadratic formula. So k is going to equal negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 1, all divided by 2. This then equals two, and then you can do the math here. It's gonna be two plus or minus two root two over two, which is just equal to one plus or minus the square root of two. The minus we don't really need to worry about because the minus is gonna make it negative. We're not even looking at negative integers. But if you look at one plus root two, that's approximately equal to 2.414. So this statement that, um, 2k squared is greater than or equal to k squared plus 2k plus 1 is true if k is greater than or equal to 2.414. So if it's greater than 2.414, then what we end up with is we end up with a, a value, uh, we end up with this thing here being a true statement, okay? So this is kind of just like some work, some work that I've done here to kind of demonstrate my inductive portion of my proof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so, 2 to the k plus 1, which equals 2 to the k times 2, which is greater than 2 times k squared, is greater than um, k plus 1 squared if k is greater than 3. Greater than or equal to 3, excuse me, if k is greater than or equal to 3. Now, in our original statement, in the original part of our proof, the assumption here was that n is any integer greater than four. Well, this is gonna be true if k is greater than three. So, since k is greater than four, 
2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1 squared. Thus, by induction, 2 to the n is greater than n squared. For n greater than 4 and n belonging to the integers. So a little bit trickier in terms of the proof wise here, in terms of the, like the algebra, it takes a little bit more logic, but essentially the idea is basically the same. What we did right up here in the inductive step is we took our new statement, two to the k plus one, we transformed it in some way to where we ended up with our assumption, and then we replaced our inequality in this case with our assumption. And then that allowed us to continue and work and do our algebra from there. So this is essentially what it is that we're going to be doing um, when we do um, induction. So just to recap, for induction, it's basically a two-part process. One, we have a basis step, which is determining if the proposition is true for the first value in its domain. So that's the first thing that we need to do. It's that first rung in the ladder. And then secondly, we have an inductive step. Assuming that the proposition is true for n equals k, we need to show that the proposition is then true for n equals k plus 1. Right? And we've got that basic process where what we're gonna do is we're gonna just write out um, what we're trying to prove for k plus one, we'll substitute in uh, for our value for n equals k, and then we've got some algebra or some other math that we need to do in order to prove our proposition is in fact true. Okay, so that concludes our video on induction.